our coronavirus is here, so it's important to have the correct information at hand, like knowing the symptoms, a high temperature, a cough, shortness of breath or breathing difficulties. If you have symptoms, self-isolate to protect others and phone your GP. Visit hse.ie for updated factual information and advice, or give us a call. Protection from coronavirus, it's in our hands. Gestational diabetes is one of the most common health problems that can happen during pregnancy. It affects as many as 12% of pregnancies in Ireland and can lead to serious problems for both mum and baby. Certain women are at higher risk of developing gestational diabetes. For example, if you are overweight, if you have a family member with diabetes, if you had gestational diabetes in a previous pregnancy or depending on your ethnic background. If you are at risk, you will receive a blood test for gestational diabetes between 24 and 28 weeks of pregnancy. If you are diagnosed, there are day-to-day -day changes you can make to stay healthy. How much exercise you get and what kind of food you eat can have important effects on your health and your baby's health. But what happens when you have gestational diabetes and how can diet and exercise help? Food and drinks are broken down in your digestive system. The sugar they contain is absorbed into your bloodstream. But sugar needs insulin to work. Insulin is made by the pancreas and helps sugar get into your cells. Insulin acts like a key that lets the sugar move from the bloodstream into the cells of your body where it is used for energy. Pregnancy hormones change the way insulin works in your body. In the later stages of pregnancy, these changes make it difficult for insulin to unlock the cells and allow the sugar to enter. This is what is known as insulin resistance. Some insulin resistance is normal in pregnancy, but this means that your pancreas needs to work extra hard to keep blood sugar levels in a healthy range. When you have gestational diabetes, your pancreas is not able to keep up. As a result, too much sugar is left in the blood. However, a carefully planned diet with high fibre carbohydrates and no added sugar can make it easier for your body to manage the sugar in your blood. Exercise will also help keep blood sugar low as it improves insulin's ability to unlock the cells and uses up sugar for energy. If blood sugar is controlled, your chances of a healthy pregnancy are the same as a non-diabetic mum. 
This makes diet and exercise powerful tools for a healthy pregnancy. However, if blood sugar is not well controlled, this can lead to problems in both mum and baby. In a study of 23,000 pregnant women around the world, researchers found a link between high blood sugar in mum and babies that had grown too big. Researchers also found a link between high blood sugar and preeclampsia, premature delivery, need for caesarean section, birth injury and abnormal sugar control in baby. Diabetes during pregnancy can also put you and your baby at risk for problems later in life, including type 2 diabetes and heart disease. But there are actions you can take. Changes in diet and exercise, combined with close monitoring, can successfully manage blood sugar in 7 out of 10 pregnancies. So no better time to start than now. To learn more about Irish research on maternal and newborn health, you can visit the HRB Mother and Baby Clinical Trial Network's website.
nature has been researching your milk for hundreds of millions of years. The composition of your milk is alive and changes throughout the day, the night, the months and the years to meet your child's needs. Your milk contains stem cells. These are cells that create and repair the body and are being researched worldwide to cure conditions like Alzheimer's and diabetes. Your milk contains components that kill cancerous cells. Your body identifies bacteria and viruses found in your baby's body and environment. You then produce antibodies specifically tailored to those infections and deliver them to your child through your milk. Your milk appears to switch on a gene in your baby's body which produces a hormone called leptin. This hormone tells your baby when his tummy is full, protecting him against overeating. Your milk contains oxytocin, a hormone that induces relaxation and feelings of well-being in your child and in you. It's all in you. Human milk, tailor-made for tiny humans. Changing your newborn's nappy is one of those things you'll be doing seven or eight times a day, so it's best to be organised from the start. Make sure you have everything you need ready and close to hand. Place your baby on a clean, soft, flat surface. Open the nappy and wipe away excess stools from the genital area with the corner of the nappy. Hold your baby by the ankles and lift up their bottom. Use soft cotton balls or a wet cloth to clean your baby. Clean around the umbilical cord area. For a girl, be sure to wipe from front to back. This will help minimise the spread of an infection. Swap a clean nappy for the dirty one. Use the tabs to see which way goes up. Avoid covering the umbilical cord as this can cause irritation. For a boy, keep his penis pointed down. Fasten the nappy at both sides with the tapes, making sure it's snug, but not so tight that it pinches the skin. Retape the soiled nappy around the contents, put it in a plastic bag and discard it in the bin. Dress your baby and wash your hands thoroughly. Babies wet their nappies several times a day. The number of wet nappies is a helpful sign of how much fluid the baby is taking in. Generally, a baby should have five to six wet nappies each day. This is a good indication that they're getting enough milk.
You put your cold water in first, you add your hot, you just check it with your elbow. If it's comfortable for your elbow, it's fine for the baby. It's about 36 degrees centigrade, the water temperature. You put your hand underneath the baby's head like that. You just took the baby under your elbow resting on your hip. Now, I'm holding the baby in the same position and I'm going to wash the baby's hair. So just wash it nice and gently. This is a very good baby. And I'm gonna come back onto my mat and I'm going to lie the baby back down and I'm going to dry the baby's head well. Babies lose a lot of heat from their heads, so make sure that you dry the baby's head very well. Now, when you're lifting the baby into the bath, just turn the baby over on its side, over in this position. Just put one arm, your left arm, underneath the head and hold on to the left arm. And put your right arm underneath the bottom and hold on to the left leg. Now you see there is no way this baby's going to fall on me. I've got the head well supported with my arm here on the left and I've got a good grip of the baby. Now nice and gently you're going to let the baby into the bath. If the baby's enjoying it, of course, just leave them in for a little while. Babies are very used to water from being inside, so they love the sound of the water. I'm going to lift the baby out again. Now you see I'm lifting the baby out nice and gently. So you settle them down, give them a little cuddle. Settle them down and then you're going to dry the baby off well. Don't forget areas where they can get sore if you leave them wet. All babies are quite fat in here, so get right in there under the chin because if you leave areas wet, they're going to get red and sore. They're all get right under the armpit here where they're all they're like that. And another area is get right under the behind the knees and in the groin area. They're areas that can actually get sore if you leave them wet. So you make sure that you dry those areas off very well.